matrix that. She said, not me, not today. I cannot believe you're running in your skirt right now, Fowler. You better stand and fight. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, K Geek XX Chic, and we are here with the season finale of Blue Eye Samurai episode eight, which is called The Great Fire of 1657. So the last episode we had a rebirth, you could say, of Mizu. She went back to her home after her quest <laughs> had failed for the most part. It wasn't, she didn't mean to go back to her home. It was actually Ringo who took her and Tigan back because they were both heavily injured and they were nursed back to health. And during that time, her spending time with her sword father, she kind of had a chance to reground herself. And the sword father kind of reminded her that she deviated pretty far from who she is at her core and that this path that she's taking is consuming her and not in a good way. And so through all of that and recognizing how many people that she's hurt directly or indirectly that she didn't mean to and the fact that she does in fact care about people, she realized that she couldn't continue going in this reckless kind of heartless path that she was trying to take. And instead we see that she went through, as I said, what seems like kind of a rebirth or a reforging of herself so that she can finish this mission that she's going on in a way that she can be okay with. And also of course, be stronger for. So we see that she actually was not able to take her original sword. It is still now melted down to a big hunk of metal. And her master said that uh, he will forge a sword for her when she's worthy of it. So she wants to go now and try to stop Fowler from his plan uh, to take over and take out the, sh the Shogunate. But uh, she said she's not going to do it with her old sword. She's going to have to go in with whatever she can get now and that she hopes that she'll be worthy of coming back and getting the sword if she should come back. So she's on her way there along with Ringo. Uh, her and Ringo made up, by the way, and Tygen is gone. Tygen found out about the fact that his ex has been married off to the Shogun's son, but more importantly, that Fowler is planning on taking out the Shogunate. So of course he has to go and try to warn them because he does care about Akemi and also because he's patriotic. And then the last thing we kind of had was some viewpoints on Akemi. Akemi's adjusting to her new life. Thanks to the advice of the madam, she recognized that while she's not in control of who she gets to marry, she can use her marriage to her advantage to do things to help other people and even give herself a semblance of freedom. So all roads lead to, lead to Edo at this point. Fowler is already on his way. So yeah, yeah, I think things are about to go down in this episode. I have no idea what's going to happen. I'm aware of the fact that a season two has already been greenlit for this show. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we end on somewhat of a cliffy with this episode, but I'm hoping that it's a good one. So without further ado, let's get into the episode. But just before I do, a reminder that I do a lot of shows on this channel, all kinds of good stuff. This may be the last episode of this show for now, but I do a lot of other shows in the same vein. So Hopefully you will join me and hit that subscribe button and also that notification bell. And please show some love to this video with thumbs up and comments if you are feeling it. All right, that out of the way, guys, let's get into the episode right about now. I'm sorry I'm a monster, Mama. Hmm. All Avengers, Mama. For her to be carrying this around for so long, it sucks so much. I swear it, Mama. I swear it. You know, it's so interesting is she made that vow to her mother and her mother ended up possibly betraying her in the end anyway. If you get caught by swordsmen, the falcons die. If you get caught by spearmen, run. All right, my boy has a good memory. Shogun Ito allowed white men into Japan for his own gain against his own laws. That's true. He deserves whatever comes. I mean, I don't know if I go that far, but about his family though, it's not gonna just be him. Don't be silly, master. You can't die. What, really? You don't know how. Oh, that's a that's, that's what her sword father said. She has got a stubborn soul. Let's hope that's true. But we're getting a season two, so I'm hopeful. <laughs> I notice the series creator's names keep switching in order. I think that's cool. Your father thinks of me and thinks of the gold I bring. Here it is. Here I am. Mm -hmm. The Shogun th thanks you. D -d 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 does he so immature so immature this year i might be allowed to meet the man in person face to face after all these years my father does not interact with dumplings next year then 
Let's hope not. Let's hope this is your final year on Earth. Woven with gold for Shogun Ito. Actually, I'm not going to be that mad if his wife bites it because she's kind of a psycho cow, so. So pretty. Is that natural? Why does everyone look scared? Is that auspicious sign thanks to one certain samurai? I take it you saw Fowler's castle and ran. Nope. Where's it coming? Ladies in the ninth floor. Almost died. One of my girls heard rumors of an attack. Akemi took her to inform her father. I haven't seen either since. You're putting it together now? You used to look at me with admiration. It's because before I realized you were a spineless coward. Right after you, the only surviving member of the Edo clan, declare support for your father as the new shogun. Mm-hmm. You breathed your first breath because of me. And you breathe now because I allow it. <sighs> Seki. Yes? What is this? Akemi is coming with me. Oh, that's his baby girl. If she wishes. Oh, he's learning. You came back for me. Oh, he said I don't work for you no more. Traitor. I did what I thought was best for you when it was never for me to decide. Oh, he has grown. He's going to die, isn't he? You breathe now because I allow it. Oh, that came back way too soon, didn't it, sir? Lock him in there. I kind of forgive Seki right now. Ooh, she loves them long weapons now. It's like her favorite thing. Yeah, yeah, you hate me. Let's move. He is not my friend. Okay. Do you still want your freedom? Yes. Ringo? Your ski plan is Ringo? Listen, I didn't have a lot of time, okay? It's not as easy as you think to plan a whole, like, escape plan and overthrowing a government and stuff, okay? And I'm still a girl. Ah. Balls. Falcons dive. Not bad. Oh, hey. Maybe together we can get near enough to warn him before we die. I have a job. Ringo, didn't you say you wanted to be great? But the chemi's coming. What do you do when you get exactly what you prayed for? That's a pretty good speech, not gonna lie. That's pretty good. Mizu is the least careful, least tactical, most infuriating man I ever met. That's why you love her! He's so stupid, he'd go straight through the front door. He would. Look at that, infuriating, infuriating yet inspirational. Where is your beautiful new wife? Have you tired her out so soon? Ew. None of your business. Whoa, hi! Who dares point a weapon in the Shogun's direction? I'm not That'd be me. Assassin. And by the way, I can't point. Oh my god! Yep, it's over. That's a lot of men. That's a lot of red. Oh, goodbye, little boys, little girls. So many people are gonna unnecessarily suffer today. God, power in war is so dumb. Why are we stopping? Cause I have gifts. Freedom. She can't, you know how heavy that is? Your it's so heavy. That poor horse. He already has an ass and now he's gotta have one on top of him too. Give this man a sword. He stays at my side. Not a bad choice. And he stays at mine. No one cares about Akemi? You just, just forgot about her, huh? Wow, he's like that dog in uh, Squirrel! Akemi, we are not friends. I know. He's not a good man. He could be a great one. I mean, I understand her being salty. I'd be salty about my black teeth, you know, because that's, how do you even fix that? Can you fix it back then? Just darkness in your mouth forever. See, this is why I couldn't be military. I'm just gonna stand out there waiting. It said they had guns and you're gonna stand there. Let them come, they will. Bye, front line. Yeah, bro was like, uh, I thought I was hiding and now you took it all down and the arrows didn't even get close. Yeah, welcome to the range of guns, unfortunately. Guns, the shotgun has no idea what Oh, he does, but I don't even think, I, you're so dumb. Why would he keep you around? 
Yeah, they know. They've been waiting. They know every move you're going to make. Every move. And that is your fault, fam. It is your fault because you let that man in. And, you know, this is what's rough is that obviously not all Europeans back then had ill will. But someone who trades in flesh and guns. I mean, your, your morals should have told you that was wrong. I just need Fowler to die because he's being so smug right now. That's the only main reason. I'm really, I don't care about the Shogun, but it's like, I need Fowler gone. Wow, they're right in the courtyard. That took five minutes. You're a small man. Ooh, look at my girl just crouched and ready like Spider-Man. She's like, just ready. Uh, man, if you had a throwing star. Do it. I feel for them because I know they have no choice. They have to. Even if they didn't want it to run away, they just get killed by the Shogun. Get ready. Oh, bye, Tygen. I credit you with vision. Why do they always have to monologue? Why? Why? No one cares. No one cares. All that vision, you couldn't see how little space a bullet needs. Damn. Our shame bread and milk until you think an ugly face like mine damn more beautiful the than way you. this is the truth of so many asian countries your humiliation that's how they'll know all right that was that was done all right he will die now Ugh, to have that ugly face be the last thing you see She put a mark on you. Oh no, she did. It was just gunpowder. Back. It's me again. Woo, she matrixed that. She said, not me, not today. Gonna have to reload. Oh, Lady Ida live, damn it. Look at you hiding behind guns every time. Who saved you this time? You were supposed to wait outside. Oh, he saved you. Quickly! No time, let's go! Good boy. Pretend to be gone. Name your price. Death! He will kill you. With a sword. Oh, that's right, because he gave the commands like that. Mm-hmm. You have a nerve. You have a nerve thinking you could actually pay him off after all that. Especially since your first chance you get, you would still, you would have taken him out. Thank you for making it slow. Tygen, almost forgive you for that. All right, one Cretan down. I cannot believe you're running in your skirt right now, Fowler. You better stand and fight. I'm scared. Spatial awareness is really not her strong suit. Oh, now you want a sword? Ooh, the camera shot. Getting ninja ass in flashbacks. Beautiful shot. And together. Control. She has. God. This is so embarrassing. <gasps> Find her and run. Honor is meaningless. Nothing comes from being a samurai but death. Facts. We're not done yet. Promise? I know. <laughs> he didn't mean killing you. He's very confused about his feelings right now. <laughs> He's like, I am so attracted to you and I don't understand why because I'm also attracted to a cami. Girl, your spatial awareness is awful. Oh, no more running. Face your demons. Oh, or just one blue eyed demon actually. That was amazing. That's an amazing shot. Hell hath no fury. Just get his dick next. Way too much damage has occurred because of that little thing too. Nope, not even scared of the flame. You see how the flames part for a demon? 
traitors. I think what's most under upsetting to me about what Fowler said is it's absolutely the truth. I mean, it didn't happen then, mind you. It happened much, much later, but his words were true. Eventually, Japan had to open up and the worst of Western civilization poisoned some of the most beautiful parts of its culture. Seki, help me. We can trap them inside. We can escape now. And live under their rule? Yeah. She's smart. It's you get a runaway for now. Oh my god, girl, put your back into it. I know you weigh 13 ounces, but come on, there you go. Come on! Let's run away. We don't need to hear their blood curdling screams. They might deserve it, but that kind of stuff will scar you, you know? Seki. I bloody well knew we were gonna lose Seki. Cause he he had his redemption arc. Seki, no. I know, but you know what? He did what he had to do. Favorite dream for Japan is the one rule by you. That's sweet. I raised you. That's right. That's your mommy, basically. Peace out, Seki. You really pulled it through in the end, honestly. You you really fully redeemed yourself. Meanwhile, she's like, anyhow, I'm still gonna stalk every last ash in this place. Stab his foot again. Oh no, I forgot. They're trapping the soldiers, but they're also trapping all the people. They should have opened their stomachs when they had the chance. You are Shogun now. Didn't I tell you she should have died? So many people that don't need to leave this city. I feel sorry for the innocent people who live there. They don't deserve this, but pretty much everyone else. Trash. I don't care about any of this anymore. I just want to be a man. Fair. With you. We could be happy. Someone tells me she might be done with men right now, though. Respectfully. Seki didn't tell me to run. He told me to do what I want. I want, exactly. We don't have to. Exactly. She wants to. I don't to. need to be great. It's not about you. I just want to be happy. Did you not hear a word she just said? Ooh, that shot. I want to be great. That's right. With the fire in the background. Mm, you better go, girl. Yeah, she's like, it's not about what my man wants no more. My father, my advisor, my cousin. If you have a penis, I don't care. <laughs> Come on, you don't want that to be the fat last face you see. Come on, girl. Your bones break like a woman's. Damn, and he would know. Oh, you just keep getting better. He figured it out. Damn. Yeah, exactly. That little soft part you got there. Yes, destroy it. You will never father again. That's right. Never stop. End it. End it. The city in the world is burning to the ground as a blood sacrifice to your revenge. Oh well. It wasn't my city. Take him out! To your white half showing. Damn. Damn, you didn't have to hit her with that truth. Kill me. You'll never find them. I'm killing you regardless. I found you. We lived loud. You'll never find Skeffington alone. Oh, thank you for the name. Or rightly with his pretty eyes. Thank you for the names. That's all you need. Don't you want to know who they are? No. Which one, Which one killed your mother? I saw my mother die. Mm. Did you? Your maid. Damn. Maid, which I hear she did till the money ran out. That makes so much more sense. I hate it. He's probably not lying. Don't wait. Don't let him live to find out. You'll figure it out later. You want to find them? You need me. No, you don't. Alive. You don't. London. Okay. Well, I can find out. Don't you end it. I really hope she took him out because honestly, if you figured out everything you needed to know with two names, you can or name you can do it. So much lost. Cities can be rebuilt. They can. Your prayer should be in thanks. Your brother survived. And your wife. How did she know she was there? Her safety. 
My father is strong. He only needs time for quiet recovery. She saved him? Under my care. Oh, ooh, revenge is going to be sweet. Mm, hell have no fury. That is the theme of this whole season. <laughs> Women scorned. Mm, you don't want to cross us, honey. Because once we cross that barrier, that border where our empathy is gone, it is a sad, sick place. Master didn't come back. Hmm. Standard answer. We can work. New Apprentice. That one, please. You kept him alive. Uh -huh. You don't keep a snake like that alive. You don't do it. Or if you do, you remove all of his limbs. Oh wait, is this a boat? Is she literally going to the... Mizu, honey, I don't think this is the right path. You're going into a world of people who are still gonna hate you and you don't speak the language. Oh, I don't know if this is a good idea. I, I, I don't see this going well. Like you can't even hide. Cause you'll stand out. Look at the storm in the distance. What a great metaphor. That's it? Hurtful and not even, no previews, no nothing, no after scene. Fine, be that way. All right guys, that was the season finale of Blue Eye Samurai, and wow, it definitely delivered. We had the most destruction and mayhem that we've had over the entire season. We see that the siege on Edo happened, although it wasn't really a full siege per se, because, you know, as I said a few episodes ago, you can't bring knives to a gunfight. There's just no comparison, no, there was no chance. There was no chance. And unfortunately, I don't think there was any way that Edo could have prepared. Like even if, and again, I'm not talking about the morality of whether or not Mizu should have told or tried to warn the Shogun, but even if she had, they didn't have the, they didn't have the weaponry. There was just no way. The only way they could have potentially stopped it is if they could have gotten out there with enough time to take out some of the army that Fowler had built. But that's it. Like the weapons, the weapons were better. That's all there is to it. All the things that Fowler said this episode were foreshadowing, obviously, of what ended up happening and what has happened in many places where Europe has shown up. It's not just Japan. Like, Japan was one example, which, as I said in the episode, they didn't actually do their worst during that time. Japan did manage to stay rather isolated for quite a while after that. But um, after World War II in particular, and we all know things went pretty bad for Japan in World War II. That's really where the Western influence came in heavy and really started to shift and shape and twist a lot of what used to be very sacred to them and change it. And so anyways, we know that what everything else Fowler said was very true, unfortunately, that many of the other places that they went to in Africa, in other parts of Asia and uh, parts of South America, they did exactly what Fowler talked about. They showed up, they enforced and inflicted their belief systems, their customs, their ways in there. Anyone who resisted was often taken out. In many cases, they tried to completely wipe out indigenous populations. And then, like they said, they forced their ideals, their beauty standards, their everything onto these cultures to the point where in many Asian countries today, the standards of white beauty are what they hold in esteem over what they have as their own standards of beauty, right? Most of these most of these countries, the way that Westerners dressed, the way that they spoke, the way that they wear their hair, all of that was perpetuated to the beauty standard and whatever existed before was stamped out or is now actually been demonized. So yeah, it was a lot of bars, really harsh bars being said in there about the truth of what Euro colonization did for a very long time and still does in some places. But um, yeah, we see that it was just, he was already planning a lot of this stuff and what he said about Western brutalization, the, the fact that they spent so much time developing these instruments of war, instruments of pain, instruments of just terrible things like that's really what Europe spent a lot of time doing and they were far ahead of the rest of the world in that regard I mean, almost every part of the world had weapons of co some kind but it was Europe that perfected weapons that do the most damage 
and looked and actually then got on boats and sought out places to use it where most other countries like Japan for the most part were minding their business. They weren't looking to find anybody else. I'm actually not Japan. <laughs> Let me take that back. Whoa. Let me rewind. Don't come for me. I know Japan actually did have a also a colonial nature as well. I take that back. They weren't a good example. We see that that siege happened. It wasn't a siege, as I said, and that they got all the way to the Shogun in a matter of minutes because they didn't have any way to protect against gunfire. And we see that the Shogun was in fact taken out. And as I said in the episode, I really wasn't sad about that. The Shogun, it really wasn't directly his fault. It was his greed. Um, not the curiosity. I'm not mad about the curiosity. I completely understand why the Shogun, when he got that invitation, as he said 20 years prior, that he would be curious about it. Who wouldn't be curious about the wide world? And as I said before, we know that Japan absolutely was exploring at least Asia during those times, but it was more his greed. The fact that he sustained that relationship, knowing what these men were peddling, knowing what these men were selling, knowing the brutality of what they were doing, that is why this was indirectly his fault and his doing. So I didn't feel poorly that he lost his life for it. And I just felt more so that the other people who were just there, didn't deserve it. The innocent people who worked with him didn't deserve it. His wife did. Anyway, don't get me started on that hag. But <laughs> so yeah, he's gone. That, that Shogun is gone. The eldest son is now going to replace him. And we see the second son is still alive. None of his boys ended up having to suffer for him. But uh, that kind of brings us into Akemi's story. Akemi was broken out, of course, by Mizu. And thanks to Madam as well. She, she warned the Madam who helped her out as well to get her girls out of there. And of course, the Kami is still mad at Mizu, and that's that's fair. But I think she recognizes that Mizu kind of redeemed herself a little bit. As I said, Mizu is one of those people where a lot of the people in her life don't necessarily like her, but they respect her and maybe even love her a little bit because when it when it matters, Mizu comes through. When it when it matters at the moral core of things, Mizu really can't walk away and do the wrong thing, right? She's definitely done some not so great things, but in the end, her conscience always kicks in. She is a good person. She's not a terrible person. It's just this twisted revenge she needs to take out for herself that really makes her make any of those decisions that are questionable. But anyway, she releases a Kemi and tells her that her, who she thought was her the love of her life, Tygen, has been looking for her and will be waiting for her, and that she's got the opportunity to actually go and be happy with him if that's what she really wants, and sends her on her way, gives her the opportunity to actually live her life and be free. And we also see that Seki, who is effectively her parent, her mom, her dad, he had a change of heart at the last minute, freed her from her father, locked her father in that uh, room as well, and basically said to her, you know what, you're right. Like, I understand what you're saying. I mean, Seki has always said that he understands what Akemi is saying. He just really thought he had to live within the confines of their system, which is understandable. As I said, as a man, there's only so much that, Se that Seki could identify with where Akemi was concerned. But clearly, uh, Akemi being upset with him and distancing herself from him really hurt him. Hurt him to the point where he was like, I would rather risk giving her the life that she wants, even if I'm not sure if it'll work, than have this girl be mad at me and hate me for life. Like that really wasn't something he could live with, which shows just how much Seki loved her. And yeah, right to the end, he tried to protect her and, and help her. But unfortunately, I knew with that, I just, you know, traditional storytelling with that huge kind of 180 for him and him having that redemptive arc and saying all the right things. I was like, we're losing Seki. <laughs> Usually when that kind of thing happens with a character like that, it is because he's going to leave the canvas of the story, but he definitely had a great part in there. And obviously that was a big loss for Akemi because that's probably one of the few people who was unapologetically in her corner since she was a child. But Akemi's a woman now and she's got to start looking out for herself. And, uh, you know, even though Seki didn't finish his last sentence uh, around while he raised her too, he did raise her, but he did also raise her to be strong. And we saw that last episode when he, they were having the go game. And he's like, I raised you with all the tools to be successful within this system. So that's exactly what he did. He gave her the best gift that he could and attempted to give her her freedom before, you know, he passed. But yeah, I think it was great. If that's the way he had to go, that was the best way for him to do it. Defending his girl, um, keeping those soldiers from continuing to come out and wreak havoc in the rest of um, Edo or outside of the Edo city. And um, yeah, we see that Akemi in that moment came into her own. We see Tygen showed up and the Akemi of, you know, episode two would have been more than happy and overjoyed and probably would have just run off into the sunset to be his wife. But 
She's been through a lot in these last few episodes and she's recognized that she's kind of tired of living under either one man's rule or another. She wants to have agency over her life and do what it is she thinks is important. And while Tigan was saying, hey, you know, none of this stuff matters to me anymore. I don't care about honor, position, money, all those things that were important to me back in episode one. Now I just want to live first and foremost, and I just want to be happy and free. And of course, you know, with the torture he went through, it's very understandable that just living peacefully is important for him now. But like she said, this is about what I want now. Everything, and it's very interesting. I love that the show is very good with the dialogue in those in those moments. Everything that Tygen said, he just kept saying, I, I don't want this anymore. This doesn't mean anything to me anymore. This is what I want. Didn't say anything about Akemi. Still doesn't get that it's not all about him anymore because understandably it's, it's the world he lives in, right? What a woman wants is not important in the world he lives in. But Akemi is not that girl anymore. She's not a girl who's just trying to do what the men around her want to keep them happy. She's not that girl who had to recite a speech to say to her father back in episode one. She now wants to do what she wants to do. As she said, she is a queen. She wants to be a queen. She's a princess actually, but you get my point. Like Madam said, she decided what she effing wants and she doesn't want to go back anymore. So like she said, I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay here in Edo. It needs to be rebuilt. Order needs to be restored. I understand the world in a different way now. I am already married to the, uh, the Shogun's son and I have position, I have power, I have reach now and I can't have that if I run off with you. Like the money that was in that box is definitely enough for them to live off of, but will it give her any power, any substantial position to do anything to help others? Not really. And it really could be gone in a matter of seconds. Like she said to Seki, like, if we don't stop and change things from the inside, another white devil is going to show up and do the exact same thing. By the way, I'm not calling people white devils. I'm using their terminology, <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. So she's not writing anymore. She's someone who wants to stay, plant her feet and do what she can from where she can. So she told Tygen that, yeah, like this is where we end because... That's not what I want. I want to stay here. I want to do what I can for my position. She stayed. She decided to go back, go back to her husband, who actually I think she actually does like. I don't think she's in love with him at this point, but her husband is, from what we've seen, generally, I guess, a nice guy. He's not as cruel as the re reputation says, but more importantly, he's someone she can control, and she knows this, and she's figured out her mother-in-law as well, so... She's in, a, she's in an arena she was born to be in, quite frankly. This is where she was meant to be as far as her skills and her knowledge and what she'll be able to have an impact in. So she's there and more importantly, she has her dad at her beck and call. She has her father now in a position where he has to answer to her. For the first time in her life, she's the one in control of her father. And yes, she absolutely is going to take some, <laughs> some delight in ordering that man around and giving him a taste of his medicine of just always lording her femininity over her and the fact that he was in a position to do whatever he pleased with her, her life, her next steps. She now has the biggest secret in the world over her father, which is that if she tells the Shogun that he was part of this rebellion, that's his life, that's it. So, yep, she's gonna have fun with that one for a while and uh, I, I'll enjoy seeing where she goes with that next season because yeah, her dad definitely needed a humbling. There's no doubt about that. So that's basically a Kemi. Tygen is now on his own. I mean, there was that big box of money. I'm assuming she probably let him have it because she doesn't really need it anymore. And I don't know what he'll do, what he'll do with that. Um, I think, I'm not surprised by the way that Akemi and Tygen broke up. I kind of felt like even when, even when Mizu was telling Akemi of all these things, like, I don't think Tygen's a good man, but it could be a great one, blah, 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 blah. The way that Akemi's face looked, she wasn't, it wasn't the same as it was back when she was in the brothel episodes ago when she was hearing about Tygen. It's, you could tell that the Tygen era of her life had already passed in that moment. That's how I knew that even if they get back together, they're not gonna stay together. It's over, right? I don't even think the, deep, the love was that deep to begin with, to be honest. And we all know Tygen wasn't really in love with Akemi either. Like he was literally with prostitutes the same night of his engagement, right? Like it was literally a stepping stone to where he wanted to be. So did he care for her? Yes. Was he in love with her? No. I don't think he ever would have been. So I'm kind of glad that that ended. And the main reason being that obviously, Tygen's in love with Mizu, okay? We know this now. Tygen is absolutely in love with Mizu. He doesn't know it yet. She doesn't know it yet. Mizu is also in love with Tygen. She doesn't know that yet. Uh, he still doesn't understand the whole situation at all yet. But yeah, his future is absolutely tied to hers. And in that moment, even when they were 
in the burning palace when he said, we're not done here yet. And she's like, yeah, I know. I mean, yeah, they both were kind of saying the same, but different things. Like he was saying that he obviously doesn't want to lose her or not have her in his life. But she was thinking, oh yeah, you still hate me. <laughs> so yeah, I think that'll be a very interesting dynamic in the season two to see how those two figure it out, if they figure it out. Because she's on a boat, which we're going to get to in a moment. But anyways, outside of that, very little Ringo in this episode, but that's fine because I think it's he's very much played the part that he's supposed to. He definitely helped out. He stood by Tygen's side. He feels like he's done what he's supposed to do. Like he always wanted to do something honorable. That whole long speech of Tygen's about how he's had this vision and this thing he's wanted to do and now he's got the opportunity to do it and he did. He did the best that he could to protect the Shogun, but like I said, that was already kind of a done deal. There wasn't much more he could do, but he did help. He assisted as best as he could and he waited like he was supposed to, but of course she didn't come back, but he is now working with Mizu's, uh, uh, sorry, Mizu's sword father. So in a way he is indeed still waiting for Mizu. Like if there's no body then for him, he knows there's still hope that Mizu is still out there and that she might come back. And I really love how the sword father just said, you know what? We can wait forever or we could just get back to work, right? AKA, I'm going to keep you here even though you talk too damn much. <laughs> and we're just going to wait for the day that she shows up on our doorstep together because both of them already know that Mizu's too stubborn to just go out like that. Uh, was that pretty much all the surrounding things I think it was? Then back to our main character, Mizu. We know, as I said, all the things she already did, released to Kemi, warned everybody. And then she showed up and had her fight finally with Fowler. This time Fowler did not have the advantage of having a barrel at her head. She got to him, she got him shook. And I think really what got him is that it hit him at that point, like what the other guy who whose hand she cut off was trying to tell her, Heiji, that this woman is not normal. Like she's, she's a demon. Like there's something off with her. She's really, her determination is what makes her scary. And of course, Fowler didn't take it seriously the first time because he didn't really have time to. But now that after everything, seeing that she came back and she's just as lethal, she finally got in here, which is really what she needed. And even though there was a decent fight, like Fowler's no joke, he definitely could take him. He took on Tygen and her at the same time and managed to hold his own for a while. But that sheer determination, that fire within her, that burning hatred she has really is fuel. And she managed to get it together and almost lost it again. We saw that he had her um, almost choked her out. She survived it, thankfully. And then he started to literally crack her bones. And then he says the magic words, he's like, your bones crack like a woman, which is sickening because that shows you that he's done that entirely too many times. He is just such trash. Anyway, and then he figures it out finally that that's who she is, that this child who there is a warrant and a bounty out on since God knows when that this is her. And it all comes up, you know, like he's like, oh, okay, so that's who you are. I finally figured it out. And then when he calls her little miss, I'm assuming, we'd, I'm trying to remember if we ever had a memory of someone calling her that, but that woke up the demon again. And she finally gets it in her and she's like, nah, I'm not going out like this. And she absolutely starts wrecking him. And she gets the jump. She has the opportunity to take him out. And then of course she needs her information first. She needs the names of the other two guys and she wants to know where they are. Unfortunately, the fact that she showed she needed that information was the door that Fowler needed to give a reason for her not to take him out. He basically says, hey, you kill me. You're not gonna get the information. You let me live. I will navigate. I will give you what you need to navigate what you need to get to these people. And he gives her the two names, which is already a huge help because she didn't have them. But then apparently he's saying that they're back in London. They're not in um, they're not in Tokyo anymore. They're not in um, Japan anymore. They're back in England. So it looks like she believed him. And I don't know if that's because she felt she had no other choice or because she just truthfully has no idea how to navigate England. But I just think that letting him live is a bad idea on many, many, many counts. So we'll have to see. She just looks, she's on a boat. I'm assuming that boat is heading back to England. She's got him locked up for now. But as I said, this is a really bad idea. She's going into the quite literal belly of the beast. She's going into a place where unfortunately she'll find no more love because we know that unfortunately England was not the most welcoming place to foreigners back then. I mean, it's not that much different now, but I mean, London is, is quite diverse. She won't be the only Asian person, but still she'll stick out. She may not speak the language. I'm assuming she doesn't speak any English. I mean, the show, show was in English, but I think we were supposed to assume it was meant to be Japanese. But either way, she's gonna be in a place where she has nothing and no one and the ways are foreign. So she will have to literally rely on a man that wants her dead. So 
I don't know. I don't know if this is a good idea. And it's very interesting, the idea that she might be in England next season. What will that mean? And does that mean we're not going to see some of the characters that we're used to, like Ringo and Tigan? in season two. So yeah, it leaves a lot of open questions, but I'm glad my girl at least finally got to where she needed to be. Like she said to him, you don't know what I've done to get to you. That is what drives me. And again, as I said, people may not like her, people may even hate her, but I think even now that demon Fowler respects her. That's one thing this girl's gonna do is earn people's respect. And Fowler knows her secret now too. So I don't know, that's a huge trump card to leave with somebody who hates you, right? That's a huge, huge thing to leave someone breathing who knows something that would literally erase and probably just destroy everything for her, right? The second people find out she's a woman, yeah, it's not gonna be easy for her. So yeah, overall though, like this is a great episode. Overall, great season. This is a fantastic show. I see why people were suggesting it to me. Thank you so much for that. I enjoyed it. It was masterfully done. I see a lot of influences of a lot of different types of genres, a Kill Bill in there. I'm seeing a lot of like uh, The Last Samurai, like a lot of different influences. I'm definitely seeing that went into this. I found out too that the person who wrote um, oh gosh, I can't think of the movies right now, but a couple other movies that definitely have the same vibe and feel, and I'm seeing that in there. I'm sorry, it's all going out of my head right now, but yes, this was really well done. Well written, the animation and the animation style, I loved. The voice acting was on point. Um, the way that they shot it, everything was really, really done well. So I absolutely understand why it was renewed so quickly. And I definitely think that she is worth some awards. So hopefully next award season, we'll see Emmy, uh, Emmy Award nominee and Emmy Award winner for this. Cause I definitely think it, it deserves it. And I'm very much looking forward to the next season. So I enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoyed watching all this along with me. And if you did, please show some love to this video. If this is all that you're watching of mine, then hopefully you'll find something else in my catalog to watch in the meantime while we wait for season two. And if not, then I will definitely see you in the next video.